Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. So I think maybe I'm gonna start introducing myself at the beginning of my videos, you know? I feel like it would be like helpful, you know? So hello, hi, my name is Sonia. I love makeup so much so that I sit down and I make videos about how much I love makeup. If you love makeup too, I invite you to continue watching. And if you're not new here, hi again. I missed you. So today I'm actually gonna be filming my very first favorites video, Sonia's Makeup's Fall Favorites. 2020. I can't believe I'm just doing this now. I feel like favorites videos are the quintessential beauty YouTuber kind of video to make. It's cool. It's fine. It's chill. We're doing it now, you know, better late than never. So here on my desk in front of me, I have some older favorites. I have some resurfaced favorites. I have some new favorites and I have some very, very new favorites that I've kind of already like made my mind up on. I'm also not going to limit myself to just makeup for this video. I'm going to include some general beauty things. Okay, great. I'm very excited. Let's get this uh, shindig started. All right, so here's the plan. We're gonna start off with makeup items and then sort of move into the non-makeup territory as the video goes on. Great, good plan. I'm a genius, okay. So I'm gonna start off by gushing about this NYX Butter Gloss. How did I not know about these? How did I literally never try any of these until like last month? So this is the NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Praline and I, I love this lip gloss. I love this lip gloss. Okay, let me just like... Do you see this? If you're a person of darker complexion or you really enjoy like brownie nude lip glosses, this one right here, do it. I, I promise you, you won't regret it. It smells amazing. It smells so good. The majority of these items are drugstore. I'll have all the products listed in the description box with prices, but this cost me definitely less than five bucks at CVS. I'm not usually like a colored gloss kind of gal. I generally prefer a very sheer gloss. I don't mind if it has a slight tint to it, but super pigmented glosses tend to like not work for me. The ones I've tried tend to get really like stringy or sticky and it's just kind of like nasty. So I tend to steer away from pigmented glosses, but this one is so... When you look at it here, it's very shiny. It's evenly pigmented. It's not patchy or anything like that. I know that the butter glosses are a staple for so many people. I'm just kind of new to jump on the train. Okay, so I took a quick break to apply more lip gloss, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. The color is so gorgeous. It's so my lips, but better. And the shine lasts for a really long time. I've been missing out. I have to go try more of these. I don't think I really need any more glosses, but you know what? It's in the name of science. Which science, you ask? The science? Yeah, the super complicated science. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. Since we did this gloss, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the other gloss on my favorites list. This. This is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. This is a new purchase, like very new, like a couple of days old, but you guys, I, I already know this is a favorite. I already love it. This is actually the lip gloss I have on right now. It is such a pretty rosy pink color. It's supposed to give like a plumping effect. It says it has hyaluronic acid, which is cool. We love hydration. This gloss doesn't plump necessarily. Like it doesn't cause a tingly feeling or anything, but it definitely makes my lips look a lot bigger. Like they look huge right now. I can't stop staring at them. This gloss is just, oh my God, it is so gorgeous. I swatched it, but I think maybe this swatch is A, bad and B, a little misleading. It's not really as pigmented as it looks on the back of my hand. It does have this very pretty rosy pink tint to it, but it's not like a thick colored gloss. I feel like it fills in all the lines on my lips, makes them look so like big and plump and pretty. What's really nice about it is that it's so lightweight and it's not sticky in the least. Does that have a smell? It does. Actually, one second. These smell exactly the same. That is so weird. I never realized that. Yeah, so if you're wondering how the Maybelline Lifter glosses smell, they smell exactly like the NYX Butter glosses. Not that I'm complaining. It's a lovely smell. I just think it's kind of funny. The formula is fantastic. The packaging is really nice for Maybelline. Like I would not have expected this from them. It almost looks like a KKW gloss. It's kind of got like that nudie pink packaging. I think it's really pretty. The best part, okay, okay, listen. It makes the perfect lip gloss sound. This is gonna sound weird. I feel like I can predict whether or not I will like a lip gloss based on the sound it makes coming out of the tube. I have been wrong about that. I've tried lip glosses that haven't made that sound 
and they've ended up being good, but it's usually an indicator to me that I'm gonna like the product. Also, this applicator is perfect, it's huge. I really love a huge lip gloss applicator. I really want it to get like all over the place, you know? The other lip gloss I own that has a very large, similar looking applicator is the Fenty lip gloss. And I just, I, I love and I cherish that lip gloss with all my heart. That one is a holy grail. It's like a forever favorite. And I feel as if we're heading in a similar direction with this one. So yeah, these two are my current lip favorites. I'm gonna move on to more like face makeup now. So I have two concealers here. One is drugstore, one is high end. They're both fantastic. This is the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer. I actually bought this last year, like almost fully a year ago. Oh my God, it's so old. So yeah, I got this concealer last year for my birthday because I really wanted to try something from Milk Makeup. I haven't used this concealer in months. It's because I put it somewhere like with all my college stuff and I just like randomly found it among my stuff the other day. And I was like, that's where this concealer went. I totally forgot about it. I forgot why I stopped using it. Turns out I stopped using it because I lost it. This is just a gorgeous concealer. I think the name fits the product so well. It's called the Flex Concealer. This concealer is like flexible. I don't know how else to describe it. It's like, okay, okay. Did I do that right? See, it goes on. It's the perfect color for me, but one swipe goes such a long way. It really is a flexible concealer. I have never tried a formula like this in my life. I love this concealer. And once I finish it up, I think I'm gonna repurchase it. I wanna say this was like $29. I'll have the exact price in the description. That is a lot of money for me to spend on a concealer just personally. And I cannot put it down. I'm about to finish it and I, I, I can't deal with that. I don't know what I'm gonna do if I suddenly run out of this when I need it. I think I'll cry. I think I'll cry. The other concealer is also a product I recently rediscovered. This is a classic. I feel like everybody knows this concealer. I cannot believe I stopped using this. I cannot believe it. I'm staring at this thinking like, what is wrong with me? Why would I stop using this concealer? Why would I do myself a disservice like that? I repurchased this recently because I have been really tired lately, I guess. And my dark circles are so bad that I thought, oh my God, I really need to go out and get like an under eye concealer. And I was looking through my options and my eyes kind of settled on this one. And I was like, wait, you know this one, you love this one. I think maybe the last time I was using this product was maybe my freshman year of college and I'm a senior now. I use it as a foundation, as a concealer. I put it literally all over my face and it looked good everywhere on my face. And it still looks good everywhere on my face. I love this concealer. My eyes are so shiny. Speaking of, I guess here's another favorite, is another brand that I have never tried before. And I don't know why I have never tried ColourPop because it is so affordable and I live five minutes from an Ulta. It's the first ColourPop product I have ever tried. And I'm just so mad at myself for not trying it earlier. So this is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Ripple. Yeah, this shadow was $6. It was $6. I'm wearing it on my eyes currently and it looks amazing. It looks beautiful, it looks gorgeous. I cannot stop staring at my eyes. The formula is so creamy and it's so blendable. I would definitely recommend using this with your finger, but I feel like everyone knew that already because I am the last person to jump on the ColourPop train. So that shadow was like an immediate favorite. The moment I tried it on my eyes, I knew I loved it. This is like solid empirical proof that I have been missing out by not purchasing from ColourPop. So I think I'm gonna, purchase more from ColourPop, probably. <laughs> so I guess I jumped on to eye favorites. I totally missed the last face product sitting in front of me. This is the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Love. This is from Selena Gomez's makeup line, Rare Beauty. This year in 2020, this year in 2020, I have been very into like cream products, liquid products, things that really blend seamlessly into the skin. And this Rare Beauty blush is no exception. It is so good. I know that when it came out, a lot of people were bothered by how pigmented it is. But personally, I like that it's super pigmented. I wear 
a lot of blush. Blush and like lip glosses, lipsticks, lip products in general, I have no issues just piling those on. So this blush is very pigmented, but it's very blendable. You have a lot of time to work with it. I think this sort of like terracotta color is so pretty. And I love that this blush comes in a dewy sort of formula and a matte formula. When I went to buy this, I went against my personal instincts and I went with the matte formula because I really wanted to try it. I've just never used like a matte cream blush or a matte liquid blush and I really wanted to try it and it was so good. It was so worth the purchase. I feel like if you guys had a nickel for every time I said this is so good in this video, you'd have like six or seven nickels. That's a lot of nickels. That's almost halfway to a dollar. Maybe by the end of this video, you'll have a dollar. So if you end up with a dollar, you're welcome. My only issue with this product comes from the fact that sometimes if I put this on barefaced, I won't set it and I'll just head out to do whatever I have to do for the day. It isn't terribly long lasting, but I think that's because I'm not setting it. Like that one's on me. So next time I wear this on a bare face, I'm gonna try setting it with some translucent powder and we'll see if the staying power is a little better. But yes, this has been a favorite. I've been using it almost every day since I got it. So the last face product I have for this video is the e.l.f. like multi-stick in the shade Radiant Bronze. Do you see it? It's like here. So these products are cream to powder, they're shimmery, and I didn't realize that until I had purchased one, but this is such a good bronzer. I did not end up liking the one that I bought for blush purposes. So I guess I don't have it right here actually, but I want it to be known that I hate the other one I bought. But when I saw that they also had this kind of like bronzy color, I, I had to go <laughs> purchase another one. It is pigmented, it is very blendable. It is shimmery, which I personally don't mind, but I know a lot of people like a matte bronzer. If you don't mind a shimmery bronzer, I would very much recommend this. I think it was less than $5. That's definitely another face favorite. I bought it like a couple months ago, like definitely over the summer, but I didn't get into using it until recently until maybe October. I just I just need to get with the program. That's what I needed to do. This is so gorgeous. If you spend time blending it out, it can look so natural while still being shimmery, still being fun. This product was just such a good purchase. It's sister, maybe not so much, but even that one, I, I think I can make it work. We'll make it work. This is so good. It's a fairly deep shade for a drugstore cream to powder bronzer because you don't see many of those. And when you do, they only go as dark as maybe like a couple shades above my skin tone. So I don't really get the opportunity to try products like that. And it was nice to have that opportunity here. If you're my skin tone, a little lighter, a little deeper, this will be a really good bronzer shade for you. The only thing I wish is that the line had an even deeper bronzer shade for people who are deeper than my skin tone. I wish that e.l.f. would have expanded the shade range of this line. I also wish that they would come out with sort of a matte version, but e.l.f. is coming out with a putty blush. And you know, as, as soon as it comes out, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. I am so beyond excited for the putty blushes. I'm sure if they're coming out with putty blushes, they're also gonna come out with like putty bronzers. Oh. But until then, I will definitely be using and enjoying this product. So I think that's it for face products. I do have two more eye products. I've been using eyebrow pencils specifically ever since I started really like doing my brows. I was a little too afraid to branch out into something like a pomade because I thought that maybe it would look a little too harsh. I've mentioned this on my channel before, but earlier this year, I shaved off the tail end of my eyebrows so I could draw them back on with makeup. If you're wondering if it was worth it, Yes, for me personally, it was so worth it. I look at my brows from like a year ago and I feel afraid for myself. What was I doing? So yeah, shaving my eyebrows off was a good decision for me. But the problem that it posed was that it took forever for me to do my eyebrows. I loved how they turned out, but it would end up taking upwards of like six, seven minutes for me to just draw on the brow hairs. And I got so tired of it. I thought, okay, screw it. I'll try a promade. Promade? Lemonade? Pomade, it's a pomade. This is the Maybelline Tattoo Studio Brow Pomade in the shade, this is the wrong side, in the shade 380 Deep Brown. So I found out recently that a friend of mine actually did the same thing as me and she shaved off the tail end of her eyebrows to draw it back on with makeup too. And I noticed that her eyebrows looked so good. They looked so good. So I asked her, 
what are you using? I can't remember which product specifically she said she used, but I know that she told me she was using a brow pomade. And as soon as she told me I'm using a pomade, I went out and bought this pomade. So thank you, Lauren. I thought that using a pomade would make my eyebrows look a little too harsh or a little too drawn on. And that hasn't been the case at all. I have like a sea of products on my desk right now. I have no clue where the brush is, but the brush that came with this product is actually really good. And that's the brush I use to do my eyebrows. To keep the color a little softer, to keep it from looking too harsh, what I do is I pick up product on the back of the brush. I wipe most of it off on the back of my hand. And then I start like flicking in the hairs. If I'm having an especially bad eyebrow day, I'll use a brow pencil to kind of draw out the shape. And then I'll use the pomade to fill everything in. This pomade has saved me so much time, so much time. Now it takes me like three to four full minutes to do my eyebrows instead of six to seven full minutes. That's a significant amount of time. So the last makeup item on my favorites list is this mascara. This is the L'Oreal Air Volume Mega Mascara. This is like brand spanking new. I bought this four days ago, three days ago. I've put this on every single day since and it is amazing. I, I already knew, I knew when I saw the commercials that I was going to love this. This brush well, it's ginormous. It adds so much volume. This is the exact formula that I love to see in a mascara. It's not too wet, it's a little dry, it's very buildable and it's very black. Okay, so that's it for the actual makeup products in my favorites video. I'm gonna move on to some sort of like non-makeup things now. I don't know if I've mentioned this on my channel before, but I am a big nail polish fan. I love nail polish. I'm fascinated by nail polish. Not necessarily in the same way I'm fascinated by makeup. That's kind of like a crazy obsession at this point. And I think it's so satisfying to just like swoop on nail polish, you know? I picked this specific polish as a favorite because I love the color. This is the Essie Expressy Quick Dry Nail Polish in the shade Not So Low Key. I love this color because I've been looking for a true brown nail polish for the longest time. And when I saw this on the shelf, I just, I had to grab it. To me, what is so, to me, what is so special about this polish is not just the beautiful like brown shade, but also the brush. Here, let me show you. I won't leave the brush out for long because it is a quick dry formula, but here, let me just show you. It's like this nice little like rounded off brush. And it's, if you can see, it's tilted. I love the applicator because the shape of the brush is really good for just like, getting in near the cuticle, but not necessarily onto the cuticle. What's the word I'm looking for? It's a very precise brush. And as you saw a second ago, the brush doesn't go like straight up and down. It kind of tilts outwards. I thought maybe by chance I'd gotten the one that was like damaged at the factory or something like that. But once I started painting my nails, I realized, oh my God, this is so convenient. Cause when I paint my nails, I don't hold the brush like this. I don't swipe that way. I have to hold the brush to the side, but when you hold the brush to the side, then the brush is straightened out. Let me see if I can explain this better. Hold on. I don't wanna paint over my nail because I love how my nails look. Ah. But you can see that the brush kind of goes off to the side instead of going straight up and down. Whatever, I'll redo this nail later. But when you come at your nail from the side here, okay, hold on. When you come at your nail from the side, the brush kind of like straightens out. This is not a good representation of this nail polish in the least. Oh no. Okay. Ugh, God. Guys, I, I already had nail polish on. I'm sorry. This does not look good. My God, it looks like some horrible, terrible accident happened in my thumb area. Maybe I should do a nail polish favorites video. Hmm. So yeah, that is my first kind of non-makeup beauty item. And now I have some skincare sitting in front of me. So, um, raise your hand if you love to pop your zits. I love to pop my zits. I take sick pleasure in popping my own zits. There is something so satisfying about squeezing your face until stuff comes out. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I can't watch Dr. Pimple Popper videos. I can't watch other people's zits being popped, but I love popping my own zits. You know who else loves popping my own zits? My boyfriend. He likes watching other people get their zits popped. He watches Dr. Pimple Popper. His TikTok for you page has so many pimple popping videos on it. I, ugh, I can't. But yeah, he recently bought a kit of pimple popping tools and he 
begged me the other day. When I say beg, he like begged me. He was like, please let me pop your zits. I told him, no, I can't handle that. That is too much for me. But he convinced me and I let him pop my zits. And they ended up healing so well that I went and bought a similar tool. What is the name of this? Hold on. So this is the Tweezerman skincare tool. That's what it's called, the skincare tool. So how this tool works is you place the sort of flatter edge around your zit and you press. This works for blackheads too, not just for zits, but essentially you just push down on the skin and it forces the skin stuff out. Skin stuff, like the gross stuff inside the zit, pus and whatnot. Oh, I hate that word. So yes, my boyfriend popped my zits. I slapped on a benzoyl peroxide treatment. And when I woke up the next morning, I noticed they had healed so well. There's a specific reason that a product like this works so well, but I can't remember what he told me it was. Okay, I'm just gonna look it up. Okay, so I guess the official name of this tool is an extractor. Fancy. Okay, so basically, if you use your fingers to pop a zit, the specific like movement you're using is not only like kind of gross because it's your hands and you don't know what's under your fingernails, but when you pop a zit with your fingers, it can actually send like the zit innards filling. It can essentially explode in different directions under your skin. So on the surface, you've gotten rid of the blackhead or whitehead, but it's more likely to leave a scar and you're also more likely to get more acne in that area later on. If you disinfect a tool like this, like with loops on the end and use it, that's gonna like gather the zit filling and move it upwards and outwards as opposed to spreading out under the skin on your face. So you'll get all the gross gunk out. It'll heal better if you use a tool like this. And as long as you're disinfecting this between uses, you're less likely to get acne in the same area later on due to that original zit. So yes, I have been using this. I have been loving this. I have been disinfecting it in between uses because that's very important. And in a weird, sick sort of way, I've been waiting for zits to pop up so I can use this tool. Not that I'm actively wishing for more zits, but if one were to pop up and I get to use this tool, I wouldn't be as mad as I would have been before I bought this. So that's my first skincare favorite. My second one, is this cleanser. The CeraVe, CeraVe, CeraVe? This is the CeraVe Renewing Salicylic Acid Cleanser for Normal Skin. I, I have been so late to jump on the CeraVe train, but by Jove, am I glad I did. This cleanser is so good. This cleanser has changed my skin. So my favorite cleanser up until maybe like this past March, April, maybe like May at the latest, was the Clean and Clear Lemon Cleanser, specifically the one with the little scrubby pearls. Yeah, that one is particularly egregious, I think. It really just dried everything out. And here I was wondering why my normally oily skin was so like crispy and dry. And I've been using this cleanser for a really long time. Like I thought I was onto something there. And I really, really, really wasn't. The fragrance is so strong. The ingredients are so harsh, like it's, no wonder my face felt so dry. I love just trying new products, trying new moisturizers, cleansers. I'm always kind of on the hunt for my holy grail, but I think I have found my holy grail facial cleanser, which is crazy. I've been alive almost 21 years, 21 on November 24th, but I never like found a cleanser that worked for me as well as this does. It claims to be very gentle. It exfoliates with like chemical exfoliants and it's supposed to leave soft and smooth skin, and it really, really does. I wouldn't recommend putting this in your mouth or on your eyes, but for me personally, this got in my eyes once and it didn't hurt. I don't know about you guys, I don't really have like sensitive eyes like that, I guess. That's just my personal experience with it. This is just such an effective, gentle cleanser. I've been using another cleanser in between the lemon cleanser and this one, but I wanted to try this one because I'd heard such good things about like CeraVe, CeraVe, their brand. $10 for a facial cleanser, are you kidding me? What am I made of money? But you guys, it was so worth it. It was so worth it. It takes off light makeup really effectively. If I'm wearing like a full face like this, I always double cleanse, I don't chance that. But after I melt off my makeup with like an oil or balm or something like that, this is so good at clearing up whatever else is left. And my skin doesn't feel like tight and dry afterwards. 
I never realized that your face isn't supposed to feel like that after you clean it. I had never realized that in my life until I tried this cleanser. It has helped me so much with my hyperpigmentation. It's crazy. I've had some of my acne scars on my face since I was in high school. Maybe the big ones you can see through my makeup, but the smaller ones I can cover with foundation or concealer, but those have been there for years and they're fading really well because of this cleanser. Also because of the 10% lactic acid from The Ordinary, which I also recommend if you have hyperpigmentation. I only use the lactic acid at night because I'm not looking for a sunburn, but these two products together, when I wake up in the morning, my skin looks amazing. I love this. It is absolutely a favorite. Oh, looks like I have to apply more lip gloss. Silly me, that wasn't the plan all along. <sighs> Okay guys, we're like almost there. I have two products left on my list. So I recently started getting into hair care, like very recently, as in like the last couple months recently. It took me until this year to start looking into how to care for my hair, which kind of products were best for my hair type. The last time I got a haircut was literally almost a year ago. It was last December and I cut it like maybe to like the top of my shoulder and it's grown a lot since then. And since I haven't really felt comfortable going out to get a haircut, or cutting my own hair, I've had to start thinking about what's the best way I can take care of my hair while it's long and make it not look so like disgusting and scraggly and dry. I'm a brown person, I'm Indian, in case you were wondering. The one beauty trick I know most brown women use is putting oil in their hair. I did that occasionally, like I put oil in my hair before I went to bed and then I'd like braid it and take a shower in the morning, but it didn't really help with my hair situation. My hair never listens to me. It just will not get with the program. I straighten it, it goes wavy again. I curl it, it goes bone straight. We very much have a love-hate relationship, she and I, but my main concern right now with my hair, I have a lot of concerns with my hair, but the main one is volume. I can wash my hair in the morning, do it all up nice, and by the end of the day, it's fallen completely flat and it looks greasy and like I haven't showered. Nowadays, when I look for conditioning products for my hair, I'm looking for things that aren't gonna weigh my hair down. I got this Heritage Take Your Vitamins Argan Oil for your hair from Walmart, I think? It was definitely less than $10. And this is such a good hair oil. It is such a good hair oil. A lot of the hair oils I've tried, even when I wash them out the next morning, continue to weigh my hair down. And this one doesn't do that. I don't use this one at night. I use it right after my shower while my hair is damp. And it is so good at hydrating my hair and making it feel soft and smell good and look silky without weighing the hair down. Also, this is sulfate free phthalate-free, paraben-free, gluten-free, mineral oil-free, color-safe, cruelty-free, and vegan. It claims that it's a non-greasy oil that repairs, strengthens, and adds shine. And I can tell you that, yes, it does all of those things. So essentially the product does everything it claims to. And it's also cruelty-free and vegan. I can't really, I, I can't complain. I can't. What time is it? It is 6.28. I've been filming since like four o'clock? I mean, to be fair, it's pretty much looked like nighttime out this whole video. I hate winter. That's irrelevant. The last product on my list of favorites isn't really like a product product. Let me just show it to you. Okay, it's matcha. It's matcha powder. So when I was a sophomore, my boyfriend and I went on a vacation to go visit his family. And we were out one day, like some outing, and he and his grandmother both love Starbucks. So we went to Starbucks. I ended up getting the matcha green tea latte and it was delicious. It was so good. I love the taste of matcha. I'm a big like tea person. And I'd forgotten how much I enjoyed that drink until the other day when I got it from Starbucks again. So enjoyed the drink. It takes me a really long time to finish tea or coffee. It takes me a really long time to go through drinks, especially if they're from Starbucks for whatever reason, no matter how much I'm enjoying them. I finished the drink in maybe like 10 minutes. I just kept sipping on it. It was so delicious, but I am absolutely not willing to pay $4.45 for a drink every time I want some matcha. So I went out and I bought some matcha for myself. It was so worth it, it was so worth it. Now I can make that latte thing at home. And I don't have to spend four dollars and four dollars and forty five. I think if my dad saw this clip, he'd probably cry. 
He's very much a good old cup of joe kind of dude. He doesn't believe in Starbucks. Dad, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. That's all I can say. But you know what? I have this now. So I'm not spending $4.45 on that drink anymore. It's the principle. I just won't do it. So I went out and I got my own stuff. It doesn't have to be this specific matcha powder. I guess any matcha powder will do. This is the matcha they had at my grocery store. So this is what I ended up with. But yeah, I'm putting it on my favorites list because it's my favorite. So yeah, guys, that concludes this video after like two and a half hours of filming. Just kidding, the time goes by really fast. I don't know where it goes, but it goes by really fast. This concludes Sonia's makeup's list of current favorites. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Comment down below. Tell me, number one, how are you doing? I just wanna know how you are. And number two, Tell me what your current favorite products are. Let me know if there are any products you've been disliking recently. I'm interested to know. Also, please feel free to subscribe should you feel so inclined. I know I would like to have you. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you're all having a great day and I hope to see you back soon. Bye.